はよう万歳 Also, sayonara. I think those are the three words. Oh, konnichiwa in Japanese means not good morning, but how you doing? Like what's going on? We're reading in Mark 4 in English, and we're reading this parable of the sower and the seed. We've gone through the first two cases, situations of the parable. An earthly story with spiritual meaning. And now we come to the third case about the seed being sown. The sower is sowing seed. And Jesus told the story of four different types of soil that it landed on. And what happened now, the disciples later tell us what it means. Verse 7 Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. So that they did not bear grain. Not the roadside where the birds came and took it away. Not the rocky soil with that layer of rock and the soil is only this deep. But this is thorns, thorny ground, ground that had been cleared. And guess what? The seed went in and it grew up. The, the thorns grew up, the weeds grew up, and choked what the seed wanted to do so that there was no fruit. Then they asked Jesus, What does it mean? He said, This. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, they hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Is this not amazing? This weird juxtaposition. It seems like an oxymoron. Things that don't make sense, they contradict each other. The word is the word of God, which is all powerful. But the thorns choke it out and it's unfruitful. How could the thorns be stronger than the word of God? Hey, listen, I'm just, I only work here. I'm just reading to you what the word of God says. Every pastor who really wants to see fruit and converts for the glory of Christ understands this, should study it, and get to understand it really well. Because this is what we battle with. We battle with it individually, too. This, this case has much、uh, depth of application. First of all, Just what did Jesus say? The seed went in, that's the word of God, the gospel. But the thorns came and choked it out. What were the thorns? The thorns were the worries of this life, deceitfulness of wealth, and desires for other things. Worry, wealth, and covetousness, I gotta have more. And they got so strong that the spiritual root couldn't exist. Even though it's the word of Almighty God. Oh, that sounds so negative. I'm, I'm telling you what Jesus said. He didn't say negative things, he said truthful things. People can have the seed planted in them, but they have the worries of life. Eternity, they're not even thinking about. No, 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 no. They're thinking about. Why does that person have iPhone 19 and I'm with an iPhone 17? I feel like embarrassed. The deceitfulness of wealth. You get it and you own it, and then you find out it owns you. And it doesn't satisfy. That's why it's deceitful. It doesn't satisfy. You're miserable when you become a millionaire. Oh, I got to get five million. And guess what? You're just as miserable. But now you have more worries. You got to watch that money. And then the desires for other things come in. Always, yo quiero más. I want more. No, you got what you, what's on your bucket list. You got it. I know, but it doesn't satisfy. I want more. And that thing can so control our minds. And get in our hearts 
those the love of things of the world and the way the world thinks that the you know, the word of God is trying to get through and bring real peace and joy and eternal life gets choked out. We probably don't pray for the soil like we ought to. The soil is us. Everything is the same in all those first three cases. But it's, well, how is it with you and me today? The pleasures of life, deceitfulness of riches, worries, desire for more things. You know, I was thinking, I said to a bunch of pastors out in Denver recently, why are meetings now so structured, services, uh, down to the minute, okay? I spoke somewhere re recently and they say, you're gonna get it at, uh, at, at 9.52, maybe 9.53 in the morning. You gotta be done by 10.30. Now, no, you can't go to 10.31 or 10.32. It's, why is that, our services? Even when there's no service after it, why? Why, why? I tell you why. Because pastors know the people don't want to be in church. Not for long. Don't believe any, what anybody else tells you. They got to run home to watch an NFL game that's going to go two and a half hours long. Oh, it went into overtime. Oh, I'm even happier. But church? No, no, come on, please. Let's be, let's be reasonable about this. They're going to enjoy a meal, Why rent a movie, go to the movies, two hours, whatever. Time for everything in this world. But the word being in God's presence, supposedly supposed to happen in church, believers gathered together, no, 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 keep it crisp, keep it organized, keep it short. I just wonder how many people who even go to church are born again because how, how could you, oh, wait a minute, maybe God won't send us to heaven because that would ruin their eternity. What? Worship all day long? God's presence? No two weeks in Aruba? Are you kidding me? I can't go to Disney World? No, I'm being real. I'm not being legalistic. But why would God punish people to send them to a place where there's nothing but the presence of God and worship and praise and whatever he has planned for us. And that's the very thing they try to do the very least of in their weekly life. Come on. Cut those thorns out. Let's pray. Lord, get, don't let the worries of this life and all these material desires crowd out what you're trying to do in my life. Come on. If this convicts you today, then go to God. I'm not the answer. I have my own problems. I need the Lord to help me, but he'll help us. Let's turn to him today. Amen. See you next time.